video today and be reviewing A Good Day to Die Hard. This one came out in 2013 and was directed by John Moore and stars Bruce Willis and Jai Courtney. Now before we start with the like button, subscribe to the post notification bell so you can get a favorite video and let's just start. Let's start talking about the good. So Bruce Willis and Jai Courtney, um, I thought they were good in the film. Um, Bruce Willis is not the best that he's been in a film. Um, he is definitely not as good as he was in obviously Die Hard from 1988, but he's fine in this film. Jai Courtney is also um, really good in this film. Um, he plays Jack or John McClane Jr. And I thought he was good. Um, and the score by Marco Beltrami, I thought it was a good score. Um, wasn't as good as the score of um, as the first film or the second film or even the third film. But for this type of film, I think the score worked. That's all the good I have. Now let's move on to the bad. So all the actors and actions in this film are terrible. I do not care about any single character. I didn't like anyone, um, and there's no character development at all um, throughout this entire film, which makes me not knowing who anyone is throughout the entire film, not caring about knowing who they are, not caring what happens to them. The only people that I actually cared about in this film were John McClane and his son. Um, the opening sequence is very boring. One of the most boring opening sequences in the entire franchise. It's very, very hard to understand, um, and I don't think that it really made sense for a Die Hard film. Um, the cinematography, which of course through shots and cameras and lighting, is very bad. This is easily one of the worst looking films in terms of cinematography in the entire franchise. Um, there's too many shaky cam sequences. There are a lot of shaky cam sequences that I guess the director thought of putting it in this film because he thought it was cool. Um, I did not like the choices that he made with the directing. I thought all the choices for directing were terrible, especially with those action sequences. Um, the first act of the film is very convoluted and very boring. Like I said, I didn't care about any of the characters, so of course the setup for them wasn't good at all. Um, I don't remember any of the characters' names or the actors' actors who portrayed them, except Bruce Willis and Jai Courtney. Um, those are the only two lead characters that I actually cared about and actually knew who they were. Um, the other characters, they had no um, nothing to do in this film, and they were very, very bad. Um, the action sequences. Now, there are some terrible action sequences in this film, easily some of the worst action sequences that I've ever seen in a Die Hard film. Um, there are also many cuts in those action sequences, so it cuts from one sequence of a character probably fighting another character and then transitions into a whole nother sequence and goes back to that sequence and back and forth like that. And it didn't make any sense why the director would even choose to do something like that. Um, the truck sequence, which is in the second act of the film, um, is very overly long, and I feel it was overly long to cover up the fact that this film has no concrete story or story that's interesting enough for this film, because the story is very bland. Um, it's easily the worst and most bland story in the entire franchise. Um, I really prefer the original Die Hard, Die Hard 2, Die Hard with a Vengeance. Those three films had great stories because they kept you... Um, involved and invested in the characters and the action sequences were fantastic in those films this film the story is horrible i did not care about the mission about what bruce willis and jai courtney's character were trying to do um so that is a very um that is a very bad thing obviously for the audience to not care about what's going on in the film um and the sequences that are in this film are very boring. There are a lot of boring sequences in this film. There are a lot of sequences that should not have been included in this film. Um, I did not really care, like I stated, about any of the characters. So when you actually get into that second act of the film, and of course the third act of the film, which I'll get to a little bit later, but the second act of the film, it just feels like nothing's happening. Nothing detrimental is happening to anyone. Um, and of course, I didn't really care about them. I didn't care about them at all in the first act of the film. So by the second act, when you don't do anything with those characters and make the audience actually care about them more than they did, it kind of ruins the entire second act. Um, the villain. Now the villain, played by Yuri Komarov, he, um, well that is the villain's name, he's played by Sebastian Koch. He is a terrible villain. Easily one of the worst villains, if not the worst villain in the entire franchise. I believe he is the worst villain in the entire franchise. Timothy Oliphant was great. Um, I really, really liked Jeremy Irons in number three. Um, of course, Alan Rickman is the best villain in the entire franchise. 
Number two, I don't remember the actor's name, but I know, I remember some sequences with the character in it, and they were very fun. Um, but this film, they just completely ruined the villain. Um, the villain, the character, and the actual actor, I didn't think he was that good at all. Um, so the villain is easily the worst villain in the entire franchise. Um, the third act of the film is easily the most boring third act of any film in this entire franchise. All the other third acts in the film, whether they were a good film, or, well, actually, I don't consider any of the other four films bad films. I enjoyed all of them to a certain extent. But this film, the third act of the film just went completely off the rails, and it was very boring, and it didn't really make a whole lot of sense. It's basically Jai Courtney's character and Bruce Willis just fighting and killing people, but you don't know why, and you don't really care why. So in that sort of way that they actually do the third act, unfortunately, I could care less about what was going on. And the ending sequence, I didn't think it did anything to make me want to rewatch the film and see what I missed. It was just a bland, nor normal ending sequence for a film like this. So that's about it. A Good Day to Die Hard is a terrible action film. It's easily one of the worst action films that I've ever seen. And I'm going to give A Good Day to Die Hard a D minus. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the post notification bell so you know if you're a video. I'm Peter. Thank you for watching.